down because I want to graduate. Oh, please don't put that in. Let's <laughs> <laughs> edit that out. There's only one course I was happy to see at the end of. Alex Boyle Snow. <laughs> 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 Only Mason, only Mason. Ben here. Check you out. I really enjoyed this week's video. Did you? Yeah, yeah. Got a bit warm in here at one point. That was it. It always gets warm in this room. It always gets warm in this room. Do you know what I'm saying? It's really hot to my door. Why? It's funny. I was laughing at him because that was me the other day. Sunday, yeah. I got really hot and flustered. Yeah. And I asked someone to come and open yeah, the door. Like, uh, I was like, like, I can't remember who was here with us on Sunday, but I said, Can someone open the back door, please? I was sweating. My face went all red and yeah. puffy. And I was laughing at you yesterday when you said, Can someone open the door? It's horrible. So yeah. It's just like, do you know. It's hot, man. And then, like, when you ask people, like, people forget where the back door is. Because it's like, Can you open the back door? Like, yeah. Yeah. Back door. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, literally. It's funny, though, man. Because I know how it feels when you get that feeling of hotness and yeah, you're trying to fade hot, and everything's getting a bit warm. It's nice. You know? Yeah. Good video though. Good video, Good man. Video. Really happy with this week's one. So. What are we talking about? Yeah. I suppose we'll get serious then. Yeah, well, yeah. Camera action face on. Yeah, so guys, this week's video um, is a follow on from the video we did last week. Obviously, we had the brand new structure which we got some great feedback on. Obviously the new structure is a lot more engaging, a lot more informative, a lot more educational, which was the aim. Of course, it's, it's still free content, so you know, uh, it's, it's gonna be limited in terms of time, but we are gonna try and give you as much time as we possibly can. So guys, this week my model and Paddy's model was more so focused on fading. Um, this week I focused on some really, really, really cool straight Filipino hair um, from a really, really good client of mine called George. Uh, he's been with me for years and his hair is amazing to cut. So um, you'll see guys, the kind of taper that we did on him was, was really, really nice and clean to follow. Cutting wise this week I didn't do so much, we more so just cleaned up the shape. But still does lots of value in there from the taper and from the shape up. Cool. And for me this week, guys, we had a look at something that can really throw a spanner in the works in any shop, any busy barber shop or salon, and that is a restyle. When someone comes in looking for something completely new and completely different, and something that's very, very, very askew from the usual haircut. So what we had a look, we had a look at head shape and dimension, and how really the diameter of someone's layer on the top. And of course the beard on the bottom can really change the appearance and overall shape of someone's face. And then once after that we really broke down the mechanics of how we went about fading this really dark dense hair with quite a lot of space inside. This week we really passed on some cool little tips on how you can really do something like that in a super quick way, super efficient, super fun as well. So I really hope you enjoy. Cool. And guys as always go to the links below if you want to purchase any tools sign up to any courses, or check out myself and Patrick's Instagram. Enjoy the video, guys. Catch you all next week. What he's actually intending to do is grow the hair out long, pretty much similar to mine. Length and waves and curls and, and all of that. So what we are in right now with George is a bit of a transition phase, okay? Which I always think is, a, is, is an important phase to talk about because mm. there's a few different things we can do when we get to this phase, okay? A lot of clients will decide, you know what, I don't want the haircut, I'm just gonna let it grow and I'm just gonna let it do its thing for six months, okay? And that's fine. If that client is somebody that can handle not having a hairstyle for six months, then leave them be. There's certain clients that don't mind not being fresh all the time and don't mind just putting a hat on for six months, okay? But people like George, who are quite fashion focused, quite trend oriented, like to look good, okay? So in the midst of growing the hair out, we need to provide George with a hairstyle that will allow him to look good over the period of four, five, six months as the hair is growing out. Now, what we need to be careful of when we're in this phase is not basically inhibiting the growth of the hair as well, right? Because what can happen is we can actually, I suppose, overpower the style of the hair with the length of the hair, okay? And we don't want to do that. What we want to do, guys, very simply now for George, is put a little bit of shape in, okay? So if we talk about length, shape, and weight, we don't want to remove any length or any weight, we just want to add shape, that's it, 
okay? So that means that we're gonna just shape what's here and we're gonna really not interfere with the length at all, okay? Now, we're still gonna have to take some off in areas to allow the hair to sit correctly, but what that'll then do is probably put George in a position where he doesn't need a haircut for another probably eight to 12 weeks because the shape that's been put in now will suffice for quite a long time. Okay, what that will allow George to do is just come in maybe every two weeks for a little taper and a shape up and that'll be it, yeah. What we're doing is eliminating the area that we don't need through the top, okay, because we're not looking to cut that right now and we're just allowing the space on the back and sides to become free to cut them. That's it, All right? As always, okay, we're not gonna cut that because we wanna keep and maintain the weight in there. What I am gonna do is just above, or sorry, just below the contour is gonna be my first section. And this is where we're gonna begin to just create some graduation. Okay, again, we're not looking to remove much length throughout this haircut, but what we are looking to do is create shape. Okay, so what I'm going to do is just bring my first section in. We can see that just below the contour, there's a little bit of unnecessary weight there. We're going to just get rid of that. Nice. Now, second section is straight up onto the contour. So we're over directing already. Back down to the previous section. There's the guide. I'm just going to follow that all the way down to behind the ear. Cool, next section. We're on the contour, so I'm over directing everything back down. Okay, but again, we can see there's just a little bit too much weight in there already for the, the layer that we have on top, okay? So all I'm doing is just slimming that in. And as we get behind the ear, I'm also just gonna slim that shape in as well. Okay, so as we said, guys, we're looking to remove minimum amount of length while just creating shape, okay? I'll be directing anything that's along the contour back down to my guide, just above it. And then I'm elevating beneath that to soften and flatten the shape behind the ear. Okay. The cotton line's clean. Next section. Okay, you can see each time I'm over directing that piece down. On the top, there's the guide. How do I know where to over direct to is the question. Okay, where my over direction finishes is where the head becomes square. So essentially everything that's on the round part of the head gets over directed back down to where the head begins to become flat again. Meaning that all of my weight is contained in the area of the head that's round. Right? Which is the intention of the graduation in the first place. Now I'm just following that cutting line through the back. Okay, again, all I'm doing here All right, it's not really much to connect to the sides because we know that that layer on top was quite short. Okay, as we come into the crown, I know that there is quite a big disconnection here. Okay, because we could see it when the hair was dry originally. Okay, there it is. Now what we're gonna do is just over direct all of that crown back down to where that guide is for the new graduation. Make sure that everything is nice and connected. Okay, we're gonna just do like a medium taper here, okay? Next up, transition. And the one open. Each time guys just coming slightly lower than the previous guard. And the number one. Zero point five. And zero.
the top, what we're going to do is opt to wear a bit more of like a short and mid-length crop. Okay, much more shorter layer in the top. All right. So what we're going to do is really add a much more choppier finish to the fringe. Complement with a nice little shape up to the front. Nice little short round layer. Okay, just to really take off that little excess of length in the corner. Slim it right on in. Then of course we're going to bring the graduation in nice and tight around the site as well. Reason is because we've got a shorter layer on the top. We're hoping to do a slightly higher skin fade there as well. And that's going to be complemented with a nice little beard fade coming through the sides. What I'm going to do here guys, just below the jawline, if you see, we have a lot of excess of length. You all see that? See this just protruding there? What that can do, it can make the actual beneath the jawbone look a bit full. So what we are going to do is really shape this up quite strongly to give a bit more of a pop to the jawline there as well. Frame the face a little bit better. All right. So Quick. Now guys, you see what we have here from the side is the actual graduate line. So what I'm simply gonna do is I'm gonna use that as a guide to basically transfer that on through the fringe to give me that nice little length and sharpness there as well. Okay, we're gonna put that in just with our actual finger razor. Okay, reasons is that's going to give us a much more shattered line because we don't want to create it too blunt, too heavy. If I was to put a very blunt line on shack, probably wouldn't look as nice as maybe something a bit more loose, something a bit more lived in. Again, based on that on personality and who the person is, and of course, obviously the hair that we're working with as well. So, grooming the section right on down, start on the graduate line, find how the comb is going to hold the section in place, guys. What we're going to do is just simply etch it in with the finger razor using the corner, sticking it ever so slightly. I'm going to stop there, brush on down, and just continue to etch in the line from the side, all the way around to the middle. Again, the body parallel to the area that I'm working on. Right behind it to give us a core section number two. Nice and diagonal. Intersecting over to the left hand side of the fringe. Reasons again, similar to our cross graduation guys, what we want to essentially end up trying to do is complete one whole panel of the section. Give me a sufficient little gap in between the hair that I've just cut and the hair that I'm about to cut. Once again, I'm just gonna dot that actual section with the finger razor. Here we go once again, come right through the middle. And again, the finger is gonna etch the line on in. Okay, and as always guys, I'm gonna continue in this fashion up until I run out of hair to cut. Little brush down in the section, very, very simply, just to see the line that we created. Once again, we can see the line is sitting really flush over to the opposite side. Representation of it in there, in the section on up. You can see my guide very, very clearly. What I'm gonna do now. Cut the line, on the back, move the strand out of the way, move on. Okay, as always, there's our guide. Cut the line, fingertip the first knuckle, move that on out of the way, and we move on. Very, very simply, following the guide the whole way to the front, bringing section number two back into section number one. Following that round shape, here we go, cut the line, fingertip the first knuckle, we stop. Okay, slide that on out of the way. Make sure the section is coming right the way through to the front to really ensure that the shape is round and fluid. We don't want to actually develop or leave the corner that we built up at the front here. So what I'm going to do is ensure the fingertips are following the head shape right to the front and ensuring that the line is nice and round. No corners, thank you very much. All right, that sits nice and flush just on that hairline there. Two, section number three. If you're ever unsure guys, section number two, section number three along the front here, roughly one finger's width. We are layering. Okay, and again, I'm asking myself that. What am I doing? I'm layering. Okay, I'm looking to remove a bit of weight, to distribute the length, to create a bit of shape. That's what I'm doing. I'm looking to create shape here. Day one stuff. All right. Moving right down the line. There we go. Coming right the way to the front, notice how the body's moving ever so slightly just to ensure that what I'm cutting is right in front of me, parallel to me. Okay, 
right up to the front there, tilt the head off a slight bit, just to assist with me taking that angle on the hairline. There you go. I'm going to ensure that everything is nice and round. Really round that off in line with the hairline. So where do you want to graduate guys? We want to graduate essentially on the contour, not below or above the contour, we want to graduate on the contour. We want that little band of weight to build right on that little round surface there. Okay, so the first corner, that goes out of the way, see that? Groom everything along. I'm going to start working diagonally now guys from this point. Yeah. I'm we'll starting to build a little bit of weight. Nice little diagonal section. Here we go. Lift it on up. Knuckles now, guys, falling on that last square point in the head, like so. I'm going to take off that little bit of excess weight. Here we go. It's over directed back to section number one. I'm going to lift the section there, like so. Over direct it right on the contour there. Okay, just to like identify section number one. Knuckles on that last square point once again. Coming nice and round. Taking it pretty much finger tight. What I want to do is focus on getting that guy line in first and then I actually go about foiling and removing all the debris underneath. None of this. Get the guideline in, then we focus on everything else. Now see how that solidifies the jawline a lot more. Gives a bit more definition, yeah, because all this debris underneath here, all this weight, just wasn't really doing anything for us. Blending the one into the one open, Again, we don't want to lose any darkness around these corners, guys. We're going to leave that quite natural. Okay, 0.5 once again. Close the lever a touch. Working out that line. Close the lever a little bit more. Close the lever a touch more. Really just focus, guys, and smudging out that little line. Of course, close the lever completely. Working the number two right off the little line now. to blend out the beard okay a little just to split this last little panel in two I'll we'll just stop a touch before the front just allow a little bit of space uh, for a shape up Okay, the 1.5 is brought, guys, right underneath that number two. And we go with the one. Motion change ever so slightly where we're just flicking the line on out. Okay, if there's a little bit of shadow left, guys, we just open back up the 1.5 once again. And all I want to do is spend a little minute going back and forth between these two guards to ensure that the one is completely blended out before I try and blend it to zero. Because if I don't do that, unfortunately, I'm gonna end up trying to blend a zero into a one, which is not always an ideal situation. Flicking off each time. See, I'm driving to none of this. Look, look, if I just do this, Mr. Noah, it's not gonna blend out. I must drive through. Zero, now, zero line starting to disappear. All I need to do now, guys, after completely blended this out, back in with the 0.5. Go back in with the 0.5. Here we go. Point 0.5 will completely blend. The walk of the zero right on into the number one. The 
different texture on top. Gonna work. Thank me both ways. And again, notice I'm not closing the scissor at all. Okay, I'm not closing the scissor at all, guys. Because I close the scissor, I'm gonna take a chunk off. Yeah? Scissor just getting squeezed coming through the top. See that? It's getting squeezed coming through the top, right? apply a little bit of rust off to the skies to really give it a bit more breakage. <clears throat> yeah. 